We are really honored to have Mayor Tory here today. I should also shout out to Councillor Doucette, who I see sitting at the table as well. Welcome, Councillor Doucette. It's fabulous to have you here. We're going to begin by framing our conversation, hearing some comments and insights from Mayor Tory. Well, Jennifer and, and ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Um, and I'm very pleased to be here. And I uh, was particularly happy to come because it was something that uh, I had talked about uh, during the course of seeking this job. And I talked about it in that way that I'm now realizing, and I've been involved. I can't claim to be a naive uh, rookie. I've probably been involved in running literally 10 or 12 campaigns myself over time and participating as a candidate in quite a few. But inevitably, you get drawn to making um, you know, commitments that are um, sensible and that are sort of common sense, but end up being simplistic. And when I see all these people gathered in the room, and when I read the material and saw who's represented here and who has a stake in some different respects in participating in this, I realized that what I had said at the time, um, you know, was a simple solution to a complex problem or an intended simple solution, and that really this is the kind of proper process to be followed to figure out how best to deal with our ravines. What I said during the election was that I thought the serious consideration should be be given to including the ravines uh, in the green belt. And it was something that wasn't my idea. It had been floated before, and I was really just saying I thought it was a good idea. And I, I, it would give you some ideas to the direction of my thinking about, uh, about the importance and the preservation and protection of the ravines. Um, but I now realize, as you do with many things you end up discussing in the kind of way things get discussed in elections, that it's not a complete answer. It's not the answer. It's perhaps a part of the answer. But that's what you're here uh, to talk about. I thought it was important then, and I think it's important now, and I'm so glad that Jennifer and her colleagues have taken the initiative to um, commence this process, uh, because I think it is not only a, um, a, a jewel that Toronto has that is in many cases unknown and undiscovered, relatively speaking, um, but I think it ends up, uh, even in a way where people don't recognize it, forming a part of the life experience of almost every person who lives in the city and even some uh, who visit. I can say in my own case that many an hour was spent, and I bet you people in this room who have lived here a long time have a similar experience to me. In my case, it was the Don Valley, and we were down down there all the time, um, you know, and we were down there doing all kinds of things, some good, some not, but uh, the bottom line is we were down there, and it, it has, it, it, I want to tell you one funny story, not about me, because I wouldn't do that, because that would be dangerous, but I could tell you one about my son. <laughs> <laughs> who uh, he went to school. Yeah, Sarah's got her tape recorder out there. Thanks, Sarah. It's good. To, um, he, he was one day um, using the ravine for a different purpose in that they were making a movie in grade 11 or 12, and part of the movie involved uh, throwing a mannequin off the Bayview Bridge down into the Don Valley. <laughs> Well, this seemed like a swell idea, uh, except for the fact that they did it at 4 o'clock in the afternoon during afternoon rush hour, which led to a flood of calls to 911, a huge uh, sort of, um, um, I'm trying to think of the right word, of sort of a, uh, the arrival of many members of the police service with lights and sirens going because it was thought that they'd thrown a body off the Baby Bridge and this had been phoned in. And all they were doing is making a movie, and I'm sure the scene was a great success, but having said all that, <laughs> the police took a dim view. But even then, uh, my son was involved in using the ravines in a different way uh, to make make a movie. But in all seriousness, I mean, this is a treasure that we have, very much like our tree canopy. And there, it's, it, sometimes when you tell people that our tree canopy is extraordinary, or that our ravines are extraordinary, they're inclined to sort of not believe you because they don't have any relative basis of comparison. In many cases, they might have been to one ravine or another, but not sort of understood the full network of ravines that exist uh, in the city. And so as a result, I think it's an underappreciated asset. And as a result, it doesn't, uh, it never has had, I guess, the kind of plan that I think you're seeking to, um, to put together to make sure that it is dealt with in a sensitive, sensible, balanced kind of way. And what's encouraging to me, and was a little bit discouraging when I first looked at it, was that when, when they showed um, a, a chart in some of the material I think you have that showed all the different sort of departments of government, agencies, the Conservation Authority and assorted others who had some responsibility for this, to me that kind of diagram doesn't ever provide me with any reassurance. It scares me. And it scares me not because there's, there's it, it scares me a little because I think sometimes that's an expensive way to look at things, but that's just the conservative part of me some of you won't like. But I, I do think about that. But I think much more of the fact that when you have responsibility separated like that or dispersed like that, it leaves a much greater chance for things to fall between the cracks. Because either somebody thinks somebody else is looking after it, or there's a confusion about who looks after it, or there's two different people telling everybody else what's really going on with the ravines. And that's a prescription for problems. 
And so the very fact that you've got what I might describe here as a sort of multidisciplinary, multi-department, uh, some might say multi-silo, um, you know, gathering to actually sit down together and look at this precious asset and look at how we can deal with it going forward to me is a moment of, of profound encouragement. Um, and I know it's the beginning of what might be quite a long process. Um, you know, I, I, I look at it and, and I said, um, I often talk about uh, both the diversity of the city and the arts and cultural sort of community of the city as being the soul of the city, but I was thinking about it in, in looking at ravines and saying, well, that's part of the sort of intellectual soul of the city, the diversity and the, and the um, arts and culture. There's a physical sort of soul to the city, if there's such a thing as a physical soul, and the physical soul of the city probably is the ravines. I mean, if you sort of thought about where else might it be or what else might it be, I'm not sure you'd have an answer. Some might say the waterfront and so on, but I think the physical soul of this city in terms of its, you know, its structure, especially if you look at that great map that's in the material that sort of has all the lines that show where the ravines are, it's like the sort of the veins and the arteries of the, of the body uh, that it, as it goes, it courses its way through the entire city. So uh, I am just, um, you know, delighted you're doing this. I recognize the difficulty of the task you've embarked upon because what you have even listed in these materials, ranging all the way from transportation, and of course I often think to myself, if anybody came forward today with a proposal to build the Don Valley Parkway through the Don Valley, they'd probably be strung up. But having said that, those things are done. They're a fact of life. And so we have to take account of the fact there is transportation in the ravines. There is a variety of kind of recreational uses. And there's pressure. And I say pressure not in a negative way, but there's pressure for people to do more things. And I see even in your materials it talks about how we can make them more accessible. And of course, with access goes a certain danger as to what can happen uh, to the ravines, which presently are you know, largely undiscovered and to some extent to some people uh, inaccessible. And I guess the task you have is, uh, is one of finding that balance. And I don't envy you that task. And I look forward to helping in any way that I can, because I think it is extremely important that we find, uh, uh, formulate a plan and find the balance so that people feel they can go and enjoy the ravines and that they can um, you know, use them to a much greater extent as part of our overall uh, open space and parkland uh, you know, um, uh, resource that we have, but only to the extent that they're able to be preserved in a way that we would all expect. So Jennifer, um, I, I'm sure that none of those comments help in any way. Perhaps the story about throwing the body off the baby bridge does, <laughs> but, um, but I, I, I really wish you well in your uh, deliberations. And I thank you for taking the time to be here. And I thank Jennifer uh, for showing the leadership on this as she does on many of these files. Um, and uh, I can't stay, but it's probably just as well. Um, but uh, I, I certainly wish you well in the discussions you have in the, uh, in, today and going forward. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mayor Story. I thought because it's the holiday season, I would take this opportunity to present some holiday reading to our mayor. Uh, this is a brand There's new There's got to be some propaganda aspect uh, to this, there but has that's to be okay. Propaganda. Um, this is in fact written by the former chief planner of Vancouver, Larry Beasley, and it is called Echo Designs for Cities and Suburbs. And it is a book that focuses on how we can mitigate climate change by designing sustainable cities. And uh, I'm not through it yet, but so far, uh, I think it's a brilliant read. So I, I hope you'll enjoy it. Thank you. And knowing Jennifer, when I get back after Christmas, there'll be a test. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm going to excuse myself. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mayor Tory.